Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, first, thank you for your distinguished service to our country and to Texas in particular. Um, I want to go back to Cameroon. Uh, I share Chairwoman Vass's interest there. I have a number of Cameroon nationals in my district. Both of you ran out of time. You have mentioned that uh, the government had established some Potemkin institutions. They weren't really doing anything to bring the two sides together. Could you elaborate on that? Because you ran out of time before. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, I understand the Cameroonian government established uh, several commissions, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact name of it, whether it's the Multicultural Institution for National Reconciliation or something, which on the face of it sounds good, but the institution, and, and there have been a couple of these, but they have not been provided adequate budget and they have not really done anything because what the country needs more than anything else is a genuine open dialogue probably to include the diasporas of the Cameroonians because they have a great deal of interest in this because sir what's happening both sides are becoming further and further radicalized uh, unfortunately I believe that the president of Cameroon is being told by his hardliners that he can win this thing militarily there is no way that they're going to win this militarily. The violence is going to get worse in the Northwest and the Southwest. Uh, the, the arm for an arm, literally an eye for an eye, and the whole world will be blind there. The violence will spread to the West Province. It may even spread to the Littoral Province, which is the large city of Douala. So, so there has to be something. We are very, very energetically uh, speaking with our allies. That's why I said that we just had in the Security Council this Monday a, what the United Nations calls an arias, where it's, a, it's an open debate, and it's so clear that everybody wants to move forward on this. Um, are sanctions on the table? Everything's on the table moving forward. But, but we have to bring this situation to an end, else there's a possibility of, of what happened in Nigeria with Boko Haram. It started as a small movement, and now look at it. And it'd be a disastrous for the region if the Cameroon government turned this thing into yet another type of Boko Haram. Or, or Boko Haram could come back into Cameroon. Uh, well, how do you, you mentioned, you know, that it, it appears to be spiraling out of control because the, the more the security forces clamp down, the more resistance there is on, in the Anglophone region. So what can we do that we're not already doing? Well, like I said, uh, the, the best we can do for right now is just work with our allies to really make the Cameroonian government understand the need for a real dialogue. And if that doesn't happen relatively quickly, then we have to look at the array of other tools we have in our toolkit uh, because, frankly, the possibility of sanctions is always there. It, but it's always better to work in concert with our our friends before we go in that direction because it is it, it, the frustrating thing is it is in the interest of everybody to have a national dialogue the situation will not end militarily each day the atrocities will get worse and worse is the permanent separation of the two regions a possibility sir i don't believe so because i think that uh, most cameroonians and including in the southwest and northwest have a sense of cameroonianness and the concept of a separated, uh, what they call Ambazonia, in my view, is not realistic. Okay. It is the view of the United States of America to recognize the integrity of the country of Cameroon. Got it. Thank you very much. Now you're back. Thank you very much, Ms. Wild. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.